Hi, in this tutorial we will study PLSQL. As you know, SQL is not a programming language and there are some tasks that cannot be performed just by using SQL. For example, we cannot write code to make some decisions like using if statements and we cannot write, for example, um, um, repetition statements either and so on. PLSQL is not just another programming language, but it's an extension to SQL. However, um, uh, in SQL, remember that we got the DDL component, the DML, and the DCL. In the DDL is when we create tables, so we cannot include that. So we, what we are doing in a PLSQL, we will combine SQL statements and PLSQL statements, but the SQL statements are mainly related with DML. That means the statements that involve select statements or data manipulation statements. A PLSQL block, uh, which is the code that we write, and remember again, the idea is that we're not just using another programming language, but we're extending SQL, and then in this case, it's becoming common in, uh, in for some DBMS, or for some DBMS database management systems to um, use language similar to PLSQL, which looks like a kind of like a C style language in which we combine SQL statements with PLSQL statements. So now there are main three sections in the code that we, that we write that we call PLSQL block. So there is the declaration, the execution, and the exception. As you can see from those three sections, the execution is the only section that is required in which one we will have the the execution of some SQL and PLSQL. Now, the declaration is where we want to have the definition of the, the declaration of variables. And in this option, in the, which is optional, what task should we perform in case that there is some type of error? For example, if a SQL statement is being executed and is looking for some data and the data is not found, how should we handle that? And, uh, or, for example, something that may be related with some type of other constraints and, and, and so on. Now, the declaration section, um, it is important for us to give a quick study because remember that we want to have SQL statements and other MPL SQL statements. So then uh, the manipulation of the SQL statement with respect to get some data, and that data needs to be transferred into some type of, of variables. So that we, we cannot directly get the information from the SQL statement, so we're going to have to have some type of variable, and that will be the, the, the addition that we will see now in some of the examples. Let's suppose that we want to get the GPA from the students, and we, we execute a statement like select GPA from the student. Now, how can we manipulate the answer that we got in a student? Because actually student, I mean, GPA is an attribute of table student. So we're going to have to create our own variable, like for example, GPA number. And then we will have to have a statement in which we transfer that answer from that attribute from that table into my variable. So that's why variables here follow the same data type that we use for tables in in SQL. Now, um, this is this is the same thing that we use when we define tables. However, there are some that will be very helpful. Most of, of the code that we will be writing will be related with a specific uh, attributes in a table or with the or with the whole or, or with a set of attributes in a the table. Then we got the options of, for for example, saying okay, we will want to have uh, GPA, and then we need to say, okay, if we're going to get that information from a table, we want that to match the type that was defined in the table. And then we need to spend additional time and say, okay, what was the type? Or we, or if we were reading the name of a student, and we're going to have that in some type of variable that we want to manipulate. So it would be nice to have that declared as a bar chart to 30, maybe, because that's how it was defined in the table. But we want to have matching data types in the, in the variable and in whatever was defined in the table. So we can spend time trying to do that or having something that may be equivalent 
or you can use the percentage type which is very helpful because for example if here the v underscore m name i said well i'm going to use this variable to get the name of the employee so instead of, of, of going and researching and say what was the data type that was defined on that table we can just say look I don't even care I don't want to go and search for that but make it the type employee that name and whatever is in that table employee the attribute name I want that type so that's that's very helpful and that's what we show in those examples now in, in that particular example that we just discussed <coughs> we're talking about just a specific type for uh, for just one attribute but then it will be convenient if we retrieve a set of attributes from a table to define a record like in this case a record that looks like an instruct in, in other systems that so we define that as a group and then uh, we can just get that uh, information all together from there or if we are retrieving, for example, all attributes from the uh, from the table student, then it will be nice just to get the percentage row type. You see that's similar to the uh, to the the one that we just discussed, which was the percentage type. But well, that was for an individual attribute. But if we would say, wait, 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 we're gonna need all the information from the students then one a student in this example will be student percentage row type and then in there is kind of like a we get the select star from the students and then we're getting all the information there and then we can retrieve that as a, as a simple record now that's the section about the, the the declaration section and again the declaration section is optional and that makes sense because we may not need the variables which is not very frequent case but that may be possible that we don't need to define any variable so that is optional however the execution section as discussed before in the block has to be required because we have to have some type of execution now in the execution i will not explain in detail what we have there because it's basically doing something uh, some um, uh, concepts like from programming like we're going to have if statements we're going to have assignment statements we're going to have a uh, loops and so on and some and, and you can review that by yourself so the the things that may be different so here is a uh, you need a statement now there may be no statements because when they they may be attributes in the in a, in a given table that had not been assigned a value we have a no like for example let's suppose that we had an employee and then it hasn't been assigned to a department and then in that we got a null and then in cases that we want we to be dealing with data if a statement so there will be the common that we got through false but there may also be statements involving null that means there was not data in assigned yet for that attribute and then this is something that how we want to be deciding and then uh, uh, you also will understand about multiple uh this issue with if then else statements and so on i think this this will be so now this is a very um, um, uh, simple example and uh this will be our first uh, uh program just to illustrate so for example in the declaration we're declaring two variables student underscore name and student underscore depth and then as you can see very easily from table students name whatever is the type we don't even need to discuss what the type is just says okay for whatever was defined in the create table statement that's the same type that I want for a student underscore name now let's see the difference in uh, what we see now in the execution because the execution it shouldn't be any difficult for any us to understand because it's regular program uh, it's just, Doing just a program but let's see what is different the, the, the difference is that we're going to have some type of sql statement in there and now we are familiar with sql statements and let's see what is what looks different from what we know about sql statements so here for example we got to select select name department name so that's that's something that we understand so we are ignoring this for just one second because this is not something that we see very often in a we don't see that in an sql statement so here select that from the students where the social security is this okay so we understand that sql statement and then ends with a semicolon but then 
you see that after the select clause we got an into so this is something that we gonna we will have now that we no we didn't have before so the select so it says okay we get the name and then we get that information in this variable so this is how it's gonna communicate so look we're not we are not we will not be able to manipulate this as a variable in the execution of my PLSQL program okay so that's what in the declaration we're gonna have the definition of some variables and then this is not a variable so I'm not that would be a common mistake I'm not I'm not able to manipulate name or department name so I need to have some variables so dev name I'm getting that information here and then here name I'm getting that on here now something else to remember is that uh, here this statement will give me just one um, answer because this is a key social security is the key so we're getting just one row as the answer then here um, this is this is how we do with an into we we get that single value now a good question will be what about if we say select name department name and then I don't have this where then in that case we're gonna have multiple names right because we're gonna have the names of all the students and the and the corresponding department names so then this will not be good enough because this can only hold the value of one name so this approach is good only when we the answer is just one so we're gonna have two type of queries that we need to connect queries that return just one single row or ones that return multiple rows so this is an example for one that returns just one row at the end of the powerpoint there is a topic before the end i think the, the topic before the last is about cursors c-u-r-s-o-r-s -S, which is uh defining some type of uh, uh kind like an, an array or a, a record uh, to, to get all the information like for the table and then we can manipulate that and we will see that later okay so to continue with this so here is once we execute this statement now we got these two variables that let's say has been assigned and then in my program there is an if statement so we, we will understand that so here it says if this variable equals to this string then do this 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 is just a print statement and then for that print statement uh, uh th th this is the name of the package dbms output and then put put line this is the, what, what we will display so there is nothing amazing there else display this and if and this is the end of the program and then the plsql statement ends with the, the slash that we have here so that's how, why is that we have that well because remember the semicolon here is the end of the statement single statement so to um, to say okay i'm done we need to have the the slash so the end uh here with the semicolon will be the end of the uh, execution and that will uh um that program will not have uh, in this case a simple uh ex exception so that's not have an exception now um <clears throat> we also discussed previously about scripts so we can we, we could just type that in the prompt in the SQL class and type the program or copy and paste it and execute it and that's it or it will be a very nice practice just to save it in a file and then execute it the way that we know now something else that <clears throat> we need to remember when we do DBMS output and I think we did that in a previous example that we did to be able to see the output on the screen we need to say this so even though this is not an statement part of the PLSQL it is a nice practice to add it in a copy for the declare for the declaration section to put the, the set server output on now on <clears throat> the sections the the follow we see that the they just talking about the format of some of the loops and uh, <clears throat> here um, this is another example that I think I will make more sense and I will try to uh, um, I will explain this and then stop because the video now is too long. So here is another ex 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 example. We have here a, uh, a variable and then here this is, this is a lex, so this is a single answer. Again, we don't need a cursor. Then we capture that in the variable. 
this is the end of the execution of the query and we had a while loop then it says while this is happening here we got a SQL statement that says update employees set salary so we're adding we're, we're increasing the salary by two percent and we keep executing now this maybe not doesn't look like a very efficient program but it's just the idea is just to illustrate the, the example so I will stop now and uh, continue with the next part in another tutorial